Okay. Well, welcome everybody. We don't have to dream of a white Christmas, we're getting one. Isn't this wonderful? Yeah, I know, I'm just really glad you came out. Welcome Facebook family, whenever you join us. If it's live, if it's later on tonight, welcome. We just wanna say hello to you from warm Billings, Montana. It's just, it's about 80 degrees out and it's snowing, right? Right, it's about 25 out and it's snowing and it's beautiful, so. Welcome, everybody, to our Christmas Eve service. Glad you made it out at 4 o'clock. Throughout tonight, I'll say tonight rather than this afternoon so you understand what I'm saying. Let's stand for an opening word of prayer and launching into our first Christmas carol tonight. Hark the herald angels sing. Father, we just come before you tonight, and we sing with the angels tonight. We sing because you have given us a reason and a hope and a voice to sing. We thank you for your presence here tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you would just touch every person online, every person in this sanctuary on this Christmas Eve celebration. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. amen.
So, kids, come on down for just a second. Any kids ages 21 and on, under, come on down. Christmas Eve time. Come, have a seat. We won't put you on the spot, I don't think. Hi. I love your tie. Hi. Hi. How are you? Well, look at this. How are you? All right. Okay. Yeah, you can stay up here, Mom. That's fine. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat. He's my brother, too. Okay, have a seat. Okay, just sit right there by sis. Right there. There you go. All right, now, now you, you want to sit right there? Right? Okay. Good, 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 good. How's everybody? Good. Excited because it's, it's Christmas Eve? And, and tomorrow is Christmas morning. Okay, so, so I guess, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. How many of you open your presents tonight? Some, just maybe some, right? Just one. Okay. Yes, that's not, that's not good. Last night isn't good. No, uh-uh. It's got it's to be tonight or tomorrow. Who are your parents? I, I, I'm, I'm appalled at that one. Okay, so some of you open a few tonight, and tomorrow is the big day, right? All right, now here's the question. Remember, some of you were here a few Sundays ago, and I asked you what you were going to give, right? Here's the real test that your parents are going to, and your grandparents, and everybody's going to be listening to. And it's okay to answer this question. It's okay to want something, right? Okay, think, think. Stop waving to people. <laughs> Kids, what do you want for Christmas? A dollhouse. Not bad. What do you want for Christmas? Paint. Paint? Okay. By the way, I've got lots of paint for you if you want some. Okay. What do you want for Christmas? One of those rainbow high doll house. No, one of those rainbow high dolls. Okay, cool. You don't want to share because you want to be surprised. I get that. Okay, okay, Lars. What do you want? I'm gonna think. Okay, that's fine. What would you like for Christmas? Old terrain Batmobile. A Batmobile. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, you're ready. What do you want for Christmas? Uh, I want a Doraemon. I'm not sure I caught that. What does he want? You don't know either, but God knows, and your parents know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you want for Christmas? A remote controlled dragon. Okay. Well, I can go with that one. All right. Hold on, we'll get to you in a second. You don't know what you want, so why even ask, right? You want to try? You want God and everybody to know what you want? Um, a doll. <laughs> a doll, all right. What do you want? A doll. A doll, okay, all right. I'll let Grandma and Grandpa figure that one out. What do you want? Um, princess set. I'm not sure, but a princess. Princess doll? Maybe? Okay, I got that. Okay, what do you want? A doll. A doll? And your last but not least, what do you want? I want food. Two front teeth. Two front teeth, that's what I thought. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this, kids. What do you want? A new guitar. Okay, just thought I'd ask. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you something that you didn't expect. 
Okay? I'm going to give you something you didn't expect, but you have to promise me one thing. You have to promise, I think I got enough. Oh, well, I hope I got enough. You have to promise that you ask your parents first when you can, when you can have it. Okay, you promise me? Promise? Yes. Promise? Oh. All right. I didn't make these. I'm just giving them out. They were made last year. <laughs> but they're still good. <laughs> no, they weren't made last year. They were made last week. But they're still good. A popcorn ball. Yay. All right. Don't throw them at people now. No, don't throw them. All right. What do you say? All right. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, that's a great question. Okay. I got three more. Three more. That's a pretty good throat. No, 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 no. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. All right. Okay. But you know, the most important thing that we have is not popcorn balls or dolls or toys, which are fun to get. The most important thing is who? Jesus in our life. Yeah. All right. Who would like to pray? Would you like to pray? Okay. And then you're going to go back and sit with your parents. And remember, get a candle. Be careful with the candle, right? Have your parents guide you on that one. I know. All right. You're going to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for our house and our food and that you were born tomorrow. Amen. Okay, go back and sit with your folks. returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks and glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them.
for just a few moments tonight. I uh, just want to share a couple of thoughts on this Christmas Eve. Many of you have heard of this story. I have shared it before. It was, it was a true and, in my opinion, a miraculous story during World War I on the Western Front. It happened Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, 1914. The war had been, the, the war, most of us don't know anything about World War I. They fought in trenches. Most deaths occurred by bayonet. By this time, 800,000 soldiers combined on both sides, the German and the English and French, combined had lost lives. It was Christmas Day, and most of the soldiers had wondered, will Christmas Day be another day of fighting? And that would be a natural thought. But something miraculous happened on the dawn of Christmas morning, 1914, on the Western Front, where French and British troops were defending, were, were just 50 miles from Paris and were defending France against the Germans. Some say it started with the Germans and others say it started with the English. But somebody started singing Silent Night from their trenches. And then the other side started singing Silent Night. And then another miracle happened. A soldier got out. I don't know if it was a German soldier or the Allies. But a soldier got out of his trench and walked toward the other side. They thought it was a trap, but the other side believed in the sincerity of, of the opposing soldier, and they too got out of the trench and walked. Two soldiers started a miracle that happened. And soldiers got out of their trenches on that Christmas morning. They shared chocolate, cigars, probably alcohol, probably water, probably anything that they had. And they started singing back and forth. On one area of the Western Front, the English beat the Germans in a soccer match three to two. And it's called the Remarkable Miracle of 1914. You can Google it, you can look at it on YouTube. A few years ago, a chocolate commercial was made uh, featuring this miraculous moment that happened on the Western Front in 1914. Now, if you're thinking about that as a miraculous moment, and it was, you might be thinking a little deeper. It would have been a tremendous miracle had that war never begun, and I agree with that. But we got to remember that Jesus Christ was born into an imperfect world, and we live and have always lived in an imperfect world. He was born into an imperfect world. The night that he was born or the morning that he was born, Andy Williams was not singing It's a Wonderful Time of the Year. It was not a wonderful time of the year. There was political darkness, there was spiritual darkness, there was emotional darkness. Most people didn't have any hope of their life, including the shepherds whom the angels appeared to. They didn't have any hope, have any spiritual hope or emotional hope. It was a time of political oppression, political division. Sounds like this year, doesn't it? But Jesus was born into an imperfect world of sin, of strife, of war, of oppression, of brokenness, of unforgiveness, of resentment. He was born that we might have hope, we might have joy, we might have salvation. And I can only imagine, as you've come out here tonight, there I said it tonight, it's this afternoon, I get it. But you've come out here and I've come out here, our lives aren't perfect. 
All of us have hopes and dreams that aren't resolved yet. All of us have disappointments. Some of us have sickness. Some of us have things in our life that are broken and in need of repair. Some of us need things restored in our life. Some of us want things just like the kids. I want this for Christmas. We all want greater things in our life. I get that. But we need to make some choices. As it were, if I can use that metaphor from World War I, we all need to get out of our trenches. We all need to do something in response to this wonderful gift. I pray that tonight, even tonight before you get into your car in the parking lot, that a miraculous moment will happen in your life. That number one that we would all here tonight choose, even those online who are watching right now or will watch later, that we will choose to focus on Jesus Christ. His salvation, his healing, his victory, regardless of what circumstances, good, bad, or indifferent are in all of our life, that we in our spirit, in our heart, will focus on Jesus Christ and the cross and the resurrection that we're not here tonight just to um, uh, spend a, a, an hour, not even a half hour yet, because we don't have anything else to do on Christmas Eve. I pray that if you're here tonight and you've never invited Christ to come into your life, that you would say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I need everlasting, eternal peace. You know, a second choice that we can make is that we just worship him. We offer our lives anew to him in a very powerful way. Most of us here tonight have probably prayed the prayer and said, I want Jesus Christ in my life, but maybe you've not been walking with God. None of us walk with God in a perfect way, but maybe tonight before you leave, you say, Jesus Christ, I offer my life to you in a renewed way. And the third choice we can make tonight of getting out of our trenches is we can choose to be hopeful and we can choose to be grateful. I visited with a leader of our church who is unable to come tonight because he can't get out of bed. I could walk here pretty freely. I didn't walk here, I drove, but I walked into the building. We can choose to be hopeful. We can choose to be grateful for the blessings that God has given us and continues to give us in life. I wasn't going to share this tonight, but as I close my comments, I was so touched by an op-ed piece that I read off of my news app this morning, I thought, oh Lord, I've got to share this. From an author called, his name is Doug McKinnon. He's a believer in Jesus, a follower of Jesus, and now I just lost, lost it off my phone. And I'm so, there it is. And I just had it. This is not good. <laughs> not only is America watching, but uh, uh, so is the whole church right now. He's wrote a book called The North Pole Project in Search of the True Meaning of Christmas. And I was so touched by his words, I wanted to read just a couple of paragraphs of his words. He writes from his own life description. I want you to listen carefully. My personal relationship with that baby Jesus began when I was but five years old. While in school they were selling Christmas knickknacks on a small table in the hallway. Within them I spotted a tiny plastic nativity scene with Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus. For some reason, as soon as I looked at it, I was deeply touched by the smiling face of that little baby Jesus. Something about it instantly brought me great personal comfort. The problem for me was that it cost one dollar. My family was going through great dysfunction at the time and money was in short supply. That said, I did manage to scrounge up the dollar in a form of four quarters and purchase the nativity scene the very next morning. Because of the dysfunction of my parents and the abject poverty it caused, we had already been evicted from several homes by the time I was five. 
It would happen again just two weeks after I brought home my plastic baby Jesus. When the constables came to throw us out of our home, they found me hiding in a closet and crying while clutching that baby Jesus to my chest. A baby Jesus I never let go of, which brings me great comfort and peace to this very day. As more and more of our fellow Americans turn away from faith, and as more and more in the clergy dishonor their faith, my belief in that baby Jesus grows ever stronger. I do believe. And because I do, celebrating the birth of the baby Jesus and what that birth signified to the world not only brings me much needed inner peace and joy, but serves as a burst of energy that renews my faith in not only him, but the belief that there is still great good in humanity. So for those reasons and more, I will be fine no matter what obstacles lay before me. Baby Jesus has covered me this Christmas and every Christmas. Those are powerful words. I don't know if you listened to all of it. Those are powerful words. And I would encourage you, especially some of you who perhaps have never known Christ, or perhaps you aren't walking with God, and perhaps right now, your kind of eyes are closed. Get rid of the message, Pastor. No, I want to share with you about Jesus Christ, his life, his victory, his power, his righteousness in all of our lives. That's why we are celebrating tonight. Amen? With that, with that, if you have a little communion cup holder, we want to honor the Lord tonight by giving, by, by receiving communion. And if you don't have your communion packet, you just walk back and get one. We invite all who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to receive these elements. I'll lead you in receiving those. It'll take you 10 minutes to get the cellophane off. But we've chosen to do it this way. We still kind of want to be friendly to people and eliminate touches on different things. Because tonight, we celebrate not only the birth of Christ, but we celebrate the cross and the resurrection. That his blood cleanses us from sin. And so we freely receive tonight his love symbolically with these elements. Jesus took the bread on that night and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Eat all of it. And then Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sin and the healing of mankind. Drink all of it. Before we continue in our worship, let me just pause for a a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son into the world. That all we have to do is believe in him, commit our life to him. We'll have everlasting life. I know for many people, Lord, life gets really complicated. And we get depressed and we get discouraged. And we get distracted by a lot of things in life. Whether it's things on the news, things in our personal life, things of the church, things of the world. And I pray tonight, though, Lord, that you would bring every person to your peace 
to your salvation and to your healing. That those who need a touch on their physical bodies would say, I feel your touch, Lord. Those that need a touch in their spirit, their emotional chaos that's swirling around them, they would say, I feel more hope and light and joy than I ever have. We thank you for your miraculous presence, even as we sing to you and worship you. We thank you for becoming flesh, that we could know what you're like, for living your life and healing people and preaching, for dying on the cross for our sin, and for rising again, that we might have everlasting life. Thank you for your love, and in response to that, we do sing back to you, Lord. What a beautiful name, what a beautiful Savior, what a beautiful Lord that we have. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, amen.
Father, we come before you tonight. We thank you for the peace that only Jesus Christ can give to every one of our lives. We thank you that while maybe tonight might not be totally silent, it will be holy. We thank you for your holiness in the sacred moment that we so share with you. May you reveal yourself in unique ways to every person, blessing them, touching them tonight as they go to their homes. May their Christmas, their celebration, their family, their friends, and I know some will go to their home alone, but no, they won't. You will be with them. May your presence, Lord, surround us, keep us, guide us, move us in ever-increasing ways. In your precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Amen.